And now we are going to look at the convergence issue. That is, when we perform all the tasks right here, when we get to this point, and then to whether we are going to repeat the whole process again or not. So this is the checking of the convergence. That means we are talking about when to stop. That is the stopping criteria. And so uh, we have a lot of way to tell whether it is going to stop or not. And then, so uh, for example, whether a feasible solution or acceptable solution is which. For example, if we would like to say find f x that is less than say minus ten. If we reach a solution x which give you a course that is less than minus ten, minus ten, and then we are going to stop. And then another one that is we are going to repeat this process for a set number of iteration. For example, that is we are going to repeat this process for um, one thousand time. That that means no matter we achieve a feasible solution or not, we are going to stop. Of course, if we reach the maximum iteration and then the solution that is not good enough, we can continue. Yeah, just use the last solution and then put it in the population one of the population one of the members in the population, and then we can repeat this process. And then so another one that is because when we look when we go back to the top. We will have the rank population, for example, for the population size of four, and then we are going to check the difference between them or the maximum distance between them. If the chromosome they are very close, and then so we are going to stop. Yeah, and then another one that is to look at the cost of each chromosome, and then this is x, this is another x. When I talk about this x, that is the first x. When I talk about this cost. That is the second chromosome, and so on. If the cost, they are close enough, and then so we are going to stop. Yeah. So that is when we talk about no changes, and then so we have to define that. Yeah. So you, so you can find different way to define what it means by no change on the cost, and the next one that would be the population statistics. That means we are going to, we are going to look at. The statistics of this population throughout a number of generation. For example, we can um, we can do a lot of thing. That is, um, say, in this figure, we are putting um, the population average as well as the best solution or the best cost. And now x axis that is the generation number we start from zero the first iteration the next and so on so if we continue this process we can have more generations and then so the best that means throughout this population we are going to pick the one which give you the best cost and then this is the best cost right here so we can just do some statistic for example um, if in the past five generation the cost the best cost that is within certain range, or it does not change much, and then we are going to stop. Or we can do the same. Instead of using the best um, cost, we can use the average cost. In the past number of iterations, say five, if the mean value, that is the population average cost, does not change for certain range and then so uh, we are going to stop yeah so we can just simply use any one or a combination of all these criteria to put to put it right here for checking whether we are going to stop or not okay and now we have um, a question why j works and then um, later on i'm going to talk about this this example to show you that why genetic outcome works Okay, in the in the synchronous section, uh, we are going to discuss about this, and then so now we have we will have some um, evaluation um, for the performance because up to now we appreciate that the binary genetic algorithm they use some random element in the search so that um, it help us to escape from the local minimum. And tends to search for the global minimum. And then, so now the question is that: How do we know the performance of the genetic algorithm is good or not? Yeah. So now, in the lit in the literature, 
we are going to evaluate the performance using statistics because genetic algorithm is a stochastic process. It involves a lot of random elements. So we will not just simply run the genetic algorithm one time. We are going to run it multiple times so that we are going to find out the mean value, standard deviation, as well as the worst and the best cost of multiple one. And then so we will have in the course work, we are going to do this and then evaluate the performance of the genetic algorithm. And then the performance is also um, is also um, affected by the control parameters. For example, the um, when we choose different kind of mutation cause over um, operations, it will affect the performance. If we are going to choose a large mutation weight, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, depends on the application. And then um, also, when we look at the convergence weight, we will know that uh, how quickly the GA converge to uh, the solution. Yeah. Anyway, when we talk about this statistic, I will give you further ideas about what it is. But anyway, at the moment, we are going to know what kind of benchmark functions we are going to use for the test. That is, each each function right here, we will have different property. Yeah. But anyway, um, in this module, I'm going to introduce you six. Um, at the moment, in the coursework, we will have more benchmark function in the literature you will find even more this more uh, functions for evaluation the first one you will just find out that this is just the sum of x i square so you can imagine that this is a convex function if we talk about only when n that is one yeah so when n that is one and then this is just f. But when we increase the value of n, and then so we will extend this to multi dimension. And then in this case, we are going to. Okay, so there's a, um, a typo here. This one should be one. And okay, so this is the first function we are going to use for evaluation. And the next one that is function two, you will just find out that so we have different form, it introduces different kind of linearity. And then function three, we have a four, four function, it means that we are going to run this value. Yeah, one of this value. Uh, actually, it is run it down. For example, when we talk about four, um, 0 0.6, which will give you zero. If we are going to do four for 2.8, it will give you two. So this is just one thing down. And then um, now we have function four, the Gaussian function. This is a random noise in the range of zero to one. So each time in each iteration, and then uh, this course function will be different. We are going to test the genetic algorithm, how good it deal with the Gaussian noise. And then function five, we have different kind of linearity. This one may have a multimodal function as well as this one. We have a cost function. So you can expect that so we have a lot of up and down. This is a multimodal function. So we are going to test the genetic algorithm, whether it can escape from the local minimum for, to find the global minimum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 